As awesome as it is to do polynomial long division, there is another way. It's called synthetic division, and we're doing it right now. Welcome to Math Bites. I'm Allison, and today we're talking about synthetic division. Synthetic division expedites the process of dividing polynomials. Now, to do synthetic division, the divisor must be of the form x minus c, where c is a constant. Synthetic division uses the coefficients of the dividend. That's the thing you're trying to divide. Let's do a fairly simple example so we can see how this works. If I take quantity 2x plus 3 times quantity x minus 4, multiply that out, I get 2x squared minus 8x plus 3x minus 12, which is equal to 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. All right, now if we were to divide 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 by x minus 4, we would expect to get a remainder of 0 because x minus 4 is a factor. So let's do that with synthetic division so we can see what's happening. All right, to use synthetic division, our divisor must be of the form x minus c. And in this case, it is. It's x minus 4. Therefore, c is equal to 4. Now, our dividend, the thing we're going to divide, is 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. So here's the synthetic division process. We're going to write it out like this. We're going to write the lines. On the outside, you put c. So in this case, we put 4 on the outside. And then on the top row, you put the coefficients of the dividend, the coefficients of the thing that you're dividing. So our coefficients are 2, negative 5, and negative 12. Now, you're going to bring the first value in the first row down to the bottom. Then you multiply that by c. 2 times 4 is 8. You write that in the second place on the second row, and then you add. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3. Now you multiply again. 3 times 4 is 12. Now you put that in the next place on the second row. And we have negative 12, and again we're adding plus 12, and that's 0. That's our remainder. Now we would expect to get a remainder of 0 because we know x minus 4 is a factor. So here's what you get with synthetic division. That last number on the bottom is the remainder. The other numbers are the coefficients of the quotient. The number next to the remainder, one place left to it, that's your constant value. And then you go up one degree in the variable for each value to the left. So what we have is 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 divided by x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 3, which is exactly what we knew it should be. Let's go over some important points to remember. When doing division of polynomials, whether you're doing it with long division or synthetic division, remember, you must write the dividend in descending order of the variable with the highest degree first. So for example, if we had 6x squared minus 9x plus x to the fourth minus 2, we would rewrite that as x to the fourth plus 6x squared minus 9x minus 2 in descending degrees of the variable. Now the other thing that you must do when you're doing polynomial division is account for any missing degrees of the variable. So for example, if we have x to the fourth plus 6x squared minus 9x minus 2, we need to account for that missing x cubed term. So we would rewrite this as x to the fourth plus 0 times x cubed plus 6x squared minus 9x minus 2. So you must get your dividend, the thing you're dividing, in this shape before you start doing your polynomial division. Now, in synthetic division, the last row gives you the coefficients of the quotient and the remainder. The quotient is one degree less than the dividend. So for example, in the problem we did, our dividend was 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. The last row of our synthetic division gave us 2, 3, 0. So our answer was 2x plus 3 
with a remainder of zero. And as it should be, our quotient is one degree less than our dividend. Synthetic division really is a fairly easy process, and it does make polynomial division a bit simpler. Check out our Math Bytes Worked Examples playlist to see more problems using synthetic division. That's it for this episode of Math Bytes. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. And if there's something you'd like to ask us, just send us an email. We're at contactmathbytes at gmail.com, and we will see you next time.